Good evening, people. Uh, this is a, a, a late night one. Because doing my studies here, um, got a couple more good scriptures. So we're going to kick this one off with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And given what Friday is, it's kind of funny that, you know, 2.14, Valentine's Day, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. So I thought that was funny. Um, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I know I've had quite a few people that tell me, well, you don't hear the spirit and, you know, God doesn't talk to you and I just think it's because you just want, you just want, and I'm like, wow. Um, okay. Clearly somebody doesn't have a relationship with Christ and, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, when that person told me that it, it, it was the, it was the funny, and it was through text message too. So it was the funniest thing that I had ever heard because it's like, wow, throughout my whole time with this person, I've been, you know, I've, I've been pretty consistent with prayer and uh, keeping my head towards God, like, you know, through it all, through it all, through, through all the crap that, that, that we've, uh, that we've gone through together. So it was, it, it, it actually didn't hurt me to hear them say that, but uh, in this scripture right here, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that comes from the spirit of God. So just that statement alone right there, when someone is working without the spirit, they're going to assume that what God tells you, what he tells your soul, what he puts in your soul and how he speaks to you is just automatically false. So that person has backslidden into the ways of the world, which we all know the world belongs to the devil. And, um, you know, the ways of the world are the ways of man and are not the ways of the spirit, which is the truth and can only be entered through the son who is the truth. So when someone backslides into the ways of the world the and goes back into that wilderness, the best thing to do is let them go into the wilderness, you know, let them go into the wilderness because they watch TV, they watch social media and they thinking that the grass is greener, you know, they really do. They, they think that, well, I'll be okay without God. I'll be okay doing whatever I want to do because, hey, God gave me free will, right? <laughs> so, you know, when somebody's like that, just let them go. Let them go into the world, you know. I was speaking to my pastor a month ago. Um, we were just having a casual conversation like we, you know, we sometimes do. We have a casual conversation, you know, after church, after Bible study. And, um, he had told me something about his, um, his relationship and I quoted a scripture to him where, um, I think it is in Corinthians as well, but it says that a sanctified husband basically can save a wayward wife and make the children's and, and make the children saved or sanctified as well. And vice versa and vice versa for wives. A sanctified wife can save a wayward husband and make the children sanctified as well. So he what he hit me with, he hit me with what he hit me with the verse that says uh pretty much one that one bad apple can corrupt the good apple. And I was like, no, sir. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, well, I don't think that you're, uh, and he followed up by saying, well, I don't think that you're, that you're correct, brother Jeremy. And I was like, I was like, sir, it's different from marriage. What that is talking about what that verse that he mentioned was talking about was just two people. You know, if it's two people, one person's of the world, one person's in Christ. That one person of the world can drag that person of Christ out of the body of Christ and back into the world, the devil's playground, and get him in all types of sinful mess. So that's what that scripture was talking about. 
So I, 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 I didn't correct them. <laughs> you know, when it comes to like people and like levels like that, um, only God can talk to him. So I, I didn't correct him on that because it, it, it wasn't my place to, but he, uh, clearly completely missed the context of that scripture reading. <laughs> so, uh, we're going back to this, uh, moving on here, but considers them foolish and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. So discerned is like, um, it's basically like they can only be seen or judged through the spirit. Uh, so if you have the spirit of Christ, which lives in us, all we have to do is, is, is accept him and, and, and repent of our sins and begin to follow him. Cause the Bible is a, uh, it, the Bible is a manual of how we should live. You know, how we should treat each other, how we should uh, be with our spouses and how we should just live daily and also how we should how we should raise our kids as well. But uh, the first part right here, but considers them foolish. He considers them foolish because they consider them foolish because they are of the world. So, you know, why they're out partying and in the club and doing all this extra stuff, they really think they're living their best life. And I say, have at it, you know, have at it and cannot understand them because they are only discerned through the spirit. Well, if they're in the world, they don't have the spirit, now do they? So how can they understand what it is that you're saying to them when God gives you a message? God gives me messages all the time. And, you know, there was one time in particular, a few months ago, someone was like, well, you're wrong and I don't believe you. I'm like, you believe whatever you want to believe. At the end of the day, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, I don't care. You know, there's a reason why God speaks to me. You know, I, I'm just a messenger. You know, if if you don't like the message, oh, well, like, you know, God has done all right by very much, very much all right by me. You know, he's, he's done, a, you know, he's just done abundantly for me, you know, Christ has just been amazing to me these past few months, just showing me who I am and showing me that regardless of, um, you know, how many people decide they want to throw me away, I can never be trash in his eyes. I like, I never can. I, you know, I have a purpose and it's things that, you know, he wants me to realize as well. And I'm going to continue to grow in them. And, and so I can realize those things. You know, and I'm uh, what are like my 18th daily walk Bible, man, because it's weird. Like, every, like I said, like I said before, every time I buy one, like God put somebody like in front of me that needs a daily walk Bible or somebody that's like fresh and accepting Christ and they need help, like with their walk. And I'm like, here you go. God told me to give this to you. He just told me to give this to you. Like this will definitely help you in your walk with him. You know, because you're giving him time every day. You're talking to him. You're having a conversation with him. And, you know, God doesn't speak to us lightly. Like, he really doesn't. You know, he's going to talk to you a few times. And after that, you know, four, fifth, six, seven time, God's going to be like, okay, well, you know, you do you. And when you come to your senses, I'll be here. You know, that's, that's, that's always been God. He never forsaken us. But, you know, we have free will. So it's kind of like. You know, are you going to forsake him or are you going to lean on him and listen to him? You know, listen to his word and, and, and be engulfed in his word. So the second one is for Ephesians chapter four, verse 18. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Mm. Now, when I read that, when I when I got this, when I was. um going through some of the sermons that going through some of the sermons uh, that I watch. And, you know, as I go cro grow closer with God, there are certain people that I, I, I watch on YouTube, which is like, that's my TV right now. Like YouTube watching sermons and, you know, listening to people and hearing their stories. Now, when I hear people's stories, when I'm able to hear their stories, that brings me closer to them. So that I can understand their walk with God, because if I don't understand their walk with God, I'm, just, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, this person hasn't 
you know, this person hasn't been through anything. But when you, when I hear their stories, I'm like, God has touched their lives just like he's touched mine. Like, you know, I feel that kindred, uh, that kindredness with them. So let's break this one down. They are darkened in their understanding. And I'm going to stop right there for the first part here. They're darkened in their understanding. I mean, they don't understand. When you're darkened in your understanding, you can't, you know, <laughs> think about it. Like you are darkened. If I turn that light off right now, darkened, I can't see. So how could I possibly understand? And the funny thing is that the devil will pull the wool over our eyes so that, so that he makes us think that we understand. He makes us think that going out to the club, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, sleeping around. And he makes us think that all of this stuff is good because our understanding is darkened because we've been cut off. We've been disconnected from Christ. We've been disconnected from, in this next part, what says the life of God, which leads me to the next part and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance I'm going to stop right there. It pretty much goes hand in hand with, with the point I just made about uh, how we get separated because we're darkened in our understanding. Um, and we get cut off because social media. Um, yeah, social media, TV. We're watching all this reality TV, which <laughs> I'm 29 years old, man. And I know that ish has been fake. It's all fake, you know, Jersey Shore, The Bachelor, that's been fake, um, everything. So watch anime. You know why? Because I know it's fake. There's no way. Well, some of the lessons in there are kind of real about spirituality, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so all that crap. It separates us from the life of God, the life of God. God lives through us. His life is already in us. His light is already in us. You know, some of the most attractive people, um, you know, humbly that I've met, I've seen the light. I've seen the, the light of God through them. And, you know, and I've told them, like, yo, man, like, you know, and I go up to them, like, you know, guys as well, guys and females. I'm like, man, so some of them have been in my church. Some of them's when I went to the conference in um, Monrovia. I'm like, look, man, like, I'm like, you had this light, like your spirit has this light, man. And it, and it is so beautiful. And I had to come up and definitely let you know, like, you know, I'm enjoying like the light from your spirit right now because it's. You know, it's making my light want to like, you know, bling too. But that's the discernment that I have. That's the, the the blessing, the gift that I have from the Holy Spirit to to be able to have that discernment for, uh, you know, for energies and things like that. And because of the ignorance, of course, because um, their understanding is darkened, so they don't know any better, you know. I think like so many people are ignorant um, as to the word, the way of God, and um, how to connect with them because we overcomplicate things. The world teaches us that to get to two from one, you got to jump over three. What sense does that make? God says to get to two from one. You have to add another one. Simple, right? Very simple. That is in them. Due to the hardening, hardening of their hearts. Due to the hardening of their hearts. That in itself is such a statement. <laughs> I know you, I know better at 15%. Um, We all have hardened hearts again because of society. 
society teaches us and psychiatrists teaches teaches us that, well, you know, because this person did this to you, you have every right to hold on to that. You have every right not to forgive them. You have every right to, you know, dedicate the next 25 years of your life to something that happened 10 years ago and to somebody that ain't even here no more. You know, to somebody that died a horrible death, that died of cancer, who might have like broke your self esteem. And, you know, this is something I, I, I tried to, I definitely tried to uh, tell my wife, and I had to take my own advice as well. Um, I'm like, how can you, how can this person hurt you when they're not here anymore? When what they did is 10, 10 some odd years ago. And I was just on the phone with my brother the other day kind of talking about that as well you know um i was like I, I used to have a heart and heart towards these people i used to hate um you know what some family did or, or what some people said but i don't know it it just went away like god literally god literally was like it's done <laughs> you know he he came in and just kind of flicked it away because it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, um, you don't have to pay for what someone did to you. So why are you, so why are you continuing to pay for that debt? Why are you continuing to pay for what someone did to you? Well, God clearly says in a book, he says, let vengeance be mine. Put it on me. Um, what's that? What did she say earlier? My yoke is light. My burden, my burden is light. Put it on my shoulders. That's what God tells us. So, and, but I also get it. Sometimes people are like, well, it's just so hard. It's just so hard to let go. And it's just so hard to, to do this. Let it go. Let it go. Forgive. Put it on God. Please forgive. Please forgive because we walk around thinking that because we have a chip on the shoulder and when we had that chip on the shoulder, I'm going to tell you, cause I, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've definitely seen it. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've had to communicate a lot of times about pride. You know, when I, I, I tell, I, man, I tell people all the time, man, I'm like, pride to kill you. Pride will kill you. Pride will kill your marriage. Pride will kill your relationships. Pride will kill your social life. Pride will get you because with pride, you can't apologize. With pride, you can't say I'm sorry. With pride, you can't move on. So like, and I think, you know, that's also a reason why divorce rates and people getting separated and also being a, a wrong, around the wrong people. And I'm going off kind of on a tangent, but somebody needs to hear this tonight, you know, or today or whenever this is watched by whoever. When it comes to relationships, if you married and all your friends single, don't listen to those people. Why are you going to listen to people that don't know what commitment is? Hmm. Why? If you're in a relationship, why are your why are all your friends single? I mean, you can have single friends, but single friends got single mindsets. When you when you married and you're around people that's not married, what type of mindset do they have? I can leave him at any time. I can leave her at any time. This ain't no commitment. If you married and you got single friends like to go out to the club every weekend or whatnot. You think the, you think those devils, you think those agents of the enemy ain't going to be like, yeah, girl, uh-huh. I see how your man doing you. You need to come on out here to the club and, and see what it was, see what, what the city got to offer. Sin? That's all they got to offer you is sin. So while you listen to your single friends, your friends that ain't married, they ain't in a committed relationship, and, and it's for both, because trust me, I'm a guy and I know it happens with guys. All right. So it happens with everybody. 
This is for everybody. Why the ham sandwich are you listening to people that are not on the level you're at? I would never take advice from an unmarried person on a relationship because you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you know, you can't tell me nothing because you're not, you, you haven't committed to nothing. You really have it. You know, I'm making the ultimate commitment to God and my spouse here, you know, but that's just me. But hey, I thank you guys for tuning in, um, watching, getting the word tonight. Um, God put it on my heart to order another daily walk Bible. So we'll see how long I keep this one for somebody else need it. Um, so in a few days, this is going to kind of be structuring a little bit to where I'm actually going to be. I wanted to initially do these videos where I'm actually reading the daily walk to you guys every day, but I think I might just kind of, I'm going to still read it daily in the morning and take my notes and do my breakdowns and kind of pick out some of the passages that God like kind of puts out to me. But that's what I got for you tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching and we're going to end it with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, I thank you for those who decided to come on and watch this stream today. Not this stream, but this recording today. I thank you for those who are out there watching, and I want to touch and agree that you continue to bless those people out there. Bless them in their relationships. Bless, you, bless them in their marriages. Bless them in parenthood, at work. Continue to be a blessing to those people, especially those that are trying to you know, make it work and, and are, not, are not putting you first in that relationship, Holy Spirit. And I pray, I actually want to bind the spirit of you know, pride, you know, the spirit of jealousy and envy and adultery and, you know, just lust, Holy Spirit. We bind it in the name of Jesus and we, and we send it back to hell, Holy Spirit. Because what you brought together, let no man tear asunder. Because it has no place here. So we bind it now, God. Because two people, two or more people are touching and agreeing. The Holy Spirit, you are surely in the midst. And we send them back to hell. We're kicking it out the marriages. We're kicking it out the relationships. And we're bringing you back into the relationships, Holy Spirit. So that you can teach us how to follow your word. And how to truly be kings and queens of the planet. In Jesus, Yahweh, Yeshua's holy name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, thank you guys so much for watching again and sticking around for the prayer. I hope you guys have a blessed night and even more beautiful Valentine's Day. Take care.